in these engines, you're supposed to have a neutral balance flywheel, and uh, unfortunately, the bell or the flywheel that came in this one uh, wasn't. It was incorrect for the engine, and that started a vibration which backed all the bell, bell housing bolts out, and that caused the whole engine and transmission assembly to kind of essentially clamshell and create stress fractures. So what we're going to do is we're going to grind out the entire length of the weld. In fact, we're going to leave a little bit of a slot and then we're going to weld from one side and then we're going to weld from the other side. And if we have any bits of um, porosity or embrittlement or problem areas, we're going to go back and grind them out and weld it again. Every time you heat this thing up when you're welding it, you're going to help burn out those impurities. So you sort of end up welding it two or three times, but that's what you need to do if you've got an old dirty casting and you want to get a uh, good adhesion. When you're doing this, uh, one of the best things to use is a die grinder um, with a carbide burr. Uh, High-speed steel burrs work just fine also. Um, I like to use beeswax as a lubricant. Aluminum needs a lubricant because it's gummy and it'll gum up your bits and take forever to get through. Uh, the other important thing when you're welding a casting is which filler rod you're using. Um, ideally, you're going to want to use a 4000 series as opposed to a 5000 series. The 5000 series 5056 uh, doesn't cope with absorbing hydrogen quite as well. 4047 rod. Um, that actually has, I think, a higher silicon content in it, and silicon is a really good degassing um, element in the alloy, so it will be a little bit less strong ten tensile strength, but it can cope with absorbing some of the impurities and give you a much less bubbly weld. As you see, when I'm welding this guy, I have to weld the back side, then the front side, and then go back and grind out some of my bubbles and weld the back side again. That's because the filler rod that I'm using can only absorb so much in the way of impurities before it starts to fizzle, and that's sort of what you want to avoid. Welding aluminum castings can be a little tricky, especially if they're automotive castings, uh, for two reasons. One, um, cast aluminum is going to be a slightly different uh, consistency from the usual 6061 or 3000 series that you're going to be generally working with. Um, the al alloys are classified a little bit differently. Um, when they cool, a lot of times they will end up uh, with a little bit of hydrogen in them because aluminum loves to suck up hydrogen. And even though industrially when these things are cast, they do everything they can to get rid of the hydrogen before they pour it, sometimes it comes out of solution during the cooling process and you have little inclusions um, that are a pain. The other issue with automotive castings is that if it's anywhere near engine oil or exhaust gases, it's a porous um, almost think of it as, as a spongy material, it will absorb that oil, those exhaust gases, the hydrocarbons in them, and uh, the longer it's been under a car or in use, the more of a pain it's gonna be to weld. Mm -hmm. 